this video, I'm going to be replacing this vent here. It has no fan in it, but it's becoming brittle with the sun. It's only like three years old. So I got a really good quality uh, vent here. And then I also got the Max Air ventilation uh, cover that will go over it, which will protect it from the elements. And also what it does is it allows you to open this vent to air out your trailer when uh, it's raining. So it works uh, when it's raining so no water can get in your trailer. Or if you're traveling, you can have this in that position and allow air circulation through the trailer. This one here comes with instructions, really easy to do. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this uh, tape that's on here. should come off pretty easily. I've removed it before where if I grab an edge of it, I can go and start pulling it off. And I'm going to remove that and then come back to you. So rather than just uh, come back to you on this, I'm going to show you what I did. Since I'm going to be removing this and not keeping it, I took a knife and I cut here along the edge of it, along the metal like this. And I took, I'm using a putty knife to work it up. And I'm just gonna continue to do it this way. This way I don't have to deal with trying to get the tape off here cause it doesn't matter. I don't need it anyway. I'm gonna continue around and get this all off and then I'll come back to you. I've got the tape removed where it needs to be removed. Um, I'm gonna be running my putty knife under here, trying not to cut this PVC roof under here, but it's almost impossible to do. If you watch my other videos where I installed this uh, Max Fan Deluxe, uh, the one with the dark lid on it, has a remote control and it um, opens up with a remote and it's really nice, it has different speeds. Then I installed a fan in the bathroom and I have that Max air cover on there so I can use this trailer in the wet conditions and have the top open up, which is really nice. In this video, you see me, you'll see me install this. So anyways, um, I'll be putting a turn on tape around this. So if I do cut it a little bit, uh, that's okay. I like to use a turn on tape rather than a decor or other sealants because uh, there's risk of it breaking down over time where the turn on tape is more permanent. So let's go inside the trailer before I start trying to scrape this up here with the putty knife and uh, show you what I need to do in there. So we're inside. This is the vent we're gonna be um, removing and replacing. So I'm gonna pull this trim ring down and then I'll show you what it looks like under that. Um, I got the lower area protected with a sheet. So if any debris falls down, it won't fall onto the floor or all over the trailer. So I took this down with four screws. Um, I wanna show you here where the sun has been hitting here. See the yellow area? It's breaking down the plastic. So uh, by me putting that hood on top, it'll protect it from the UV rays and then this should last for a long, long time. Um, I'll show you this down here. I put this on another trailer and I took it off and put it in this trailer, it's a shade. So um, it goes over it and you can just pull the shade shut. So what I'll do is I'll put a link to this below in the description. Uh, so if you're interested in buying one, you can buy one. I, I like it, you just pull the, the shade on it and it closes it up and blocks out the sunlight. So in this trailer, we're fortunate where they wired. So if I wanted to put a uh, van in here in the future, I can. So it's all set up for it. That's nice. So I'm going to go ahead and take these four screws off with these brackets here. And then uh, I'll show you more on this area. So this vent is pretty cheap, if you ask me. Um, this is how you pull the screen down, like this. And I think I actually have a couple of these that are broken. This tab there, one, one just broke off. It's really brittle. You can see how it's all discolored, yellow under there. It shouldn't be, it should be white. Um, so I pull that down. I just want to show you how cheap it's made. So we're going to go back on the roof. Back on the roof. I'm going to get started removing this. Um, just so you know, 
the putties under here that holds it, it's actually a sealant that holds really, really good. It's hard to get this thing off. Um, they didn't use screws, but this uh, sealant has sealed everything really tight, so it will never leak the way it is. I'll show you a little bit of what I go through here. It's not very fun. I just worked my way around it, trying to cut here, and uh, hoping not to cut anything below it, but I will. You'll see, and so I just work my way around. And uh, once I get around, I'll pry it up a little bit and it'll come loose. So I got it all uh, removed, I think. We'll be lifting it up in a second, but I wanna show you this area I'm working in. I got solar panels all around me, a skylight, so it's really hard to work here. <laughs> it's really tight, so I was bending all kinds of ways to get this out. So let's remove it. It's probably all torn up underneath. We'll see. Yeah, it is. So what I'll do is I'm going to just have to cut the loose stuff off. And then uh, I'll clean the area up. But I want to show you here on the bottom of this. So you can see part of the roofing here. Um, and it's just adhered with this adhesive. So there's no way to get it apart. Um, and there's no way it would be leaking either. Um, this thing is so brittle. Look at this. I'll just, you can hear it cracking. So it's uh, time to get replaced. So to clean the area up, I'll use a rag and then I'll use uh, this 100% uh, pure acetone uh, nail polish remover on here. I found this is uh, cheaper than buying it at a hardware store. Uh, they sell it for more money, and it's the same thing. So I'll have links to that below. And then I'll finish it up after I use the acetone with denatured alcohol to clean the surface really nice. I have the area as clean as I can get it. So I, I wipe some acetone on here, then I use a scraper to scrape carefully on here to get the majority of the clumpy stuff off. And, uh, and then I wiped it all down with the rag acetone then I did the denatured alcohol all the way around because I, when I put my turnabond tape on the edge I want to make sure it sticks so you want no residue or anything on there to make it not stick and you want the area as clean as possible. Now it calls for on the bottom flange it'll uh, be against the roof to use a uh, butyl tape or putty tape whatever you want to call it um, it's Alpha Systems is one that I've had really good luck with. Um, so I'm going to put it here underneath all the screw holes. And so I found with this, like I've mentioned in other videos, the best thing to do is have it in your refrigerator or freezer for a day or so. So it gets uh, kind of stiff. And uh, what it is is wax paper over the butyl tape. And if you get this tape warm, it really sticks to this wax paper and it's hard to get off. So I found it's better to have it cold and then apply it and then peel it off. It still might be a little hard, but you peel it. Once you get it started, it peels off. And then I set this in the sun to uh, get a little bit warm or take a hair dryer or something, warm it up. And then I'll go stick it on the roof. I've got the tape all on. So what I did was I put it all on first and then as pulling this off, I saved this one for last. Um, the ticket to this is put it in the freezer. That's the best way. So it gets cold. And if you try and re remove this uh, tape here, the wax paper off of it when it's warm, forget about it. It's a nightmare. So I just put it on. This is a wax paper. And it pretty much peels off. But um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat this up with the dryer real quick because it's not too sunny today. Uh, I want to make this a little bit warm so it gets sticky and it's soft so that when I put the screws in, it kind of squishes down and seals. So I'm going to go ahead and get my dryer and warm it up. Back on the roof. So here is the front of the vehicle. Here's the hinge. So you want the the hinge towards the front of the vehicle. We're going over here. This is the front of the vehicle. Here is the hinge. 
So we're going to have that. So it's faced here. We want to center this the best we can. So once this is down, it's down. So I want to get it centered as good as I can. Right there. I'm going to press it in place and then go around putting my screws in. Well, that's interesting. So this calls for 28 screws. The package says that there's 16 screws, but there's actually 14. So I'm curious why they have all these holes here. So I'm going to go ahead and use some uh, screws that I have here. Um, they're the same length. They're a little coarser. Um, I think they're a little better. They have the Robert's head square head on them. So um, they'll be real nice with the flat uh, head on them because the tape will go over them a little better. So I end up using my screws here. Um, the butyl tape that squeezed out of here, I scraped with a putty knife. So the screws, I put them in, and I just worked my way around. And um, the, the uh, butyl tape squeezed out. And then I just made sure that I went tight enough where they were tight, but they didn't strip, uh, the threads didn't strip in the wood. So uh, pretty, pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and put my turnabond tape on. I'm putting the tape on here. I've already put it on three sides, so I want to show you how I do it here. Um, I've done it in a lot of videos. So here's the tape. It's got the adhesive on the back. See that clear film that's on the back there? To open this up, you just go like this. You get a gap there. You pull it apart. Now I'm going to show you how I do this. Hopefully I don't block the camera. I pull it back a little bit here. It's really sticky, so you got to be careful. As soon as it touches, you aren't going to get it apart. So I'm putting it on here, and I'm just letting it rest down here. I'm going to go along here and apply it along here. Don't touch here, okay? You, the, the thing is to just to take your time here. Push it down with your fingers soft. Push it down in there. I got it a little too long, but that's okay. So you work your way down. Do not hit this area yet down here on the roof. Just this top. Go around your screws carefully. Like that. Here, work your way down, getting the air bubbles out. Just like that. Just take your time on this, because if you don't, you're going to regret it. Then I have a roller here with a round edge on it. I'm going to work from the center out, making sure I get the air bubbles out. Just like that. And I'm going to go the other way. Working their bubbles out. This thing works really good for getting in the cracks. You're going to get some air bubbles if you aren't careful. I'm pushing it down. I'm working my way down. I'm, looks like I'm going to get some type of air bubble here, but I'm not too worried um, about it because this it's the way this is a the turn is made and everything that it makes it like that. So I'm just going to roll this with my roller down just like that. So the main thing is just take your time. If I had pushed this down and push it down here and then try to roll it in this groove, it wouldn't have stretched to get in this groove. So you want it nice and tight so no water will get in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll this and push it down really good 
with my fingers and the roller around the screws and then I'll be done with this. And it looks like the sun is setting here. It's a uh, short day, so and I keep getting um, interrupted by neighbors around here stopping by. So um, I'm probably not going to get the hood on until tomorrow. So when I come back out here tomorrow, the sun will be shining right here, but that's okay. So right now, I think I can go inside and put it together. It's all done outside. We're back on the roof. Going to get this Max Air uh, ventilation cover on. Um, so, oh my God, it looks pretty good here. It's the next morning. We've got a lot of sun over here. So I'm kind of warm. It's nice. Um, so what I got to do is we're going to put these brackets on here. So I'm going to open this lid up a little bit and go down there below and make sure there's nothing in my way when I go to drill these holes. I don't want to drill into anything. So let's go down below and see what we got going on down there. I cranked up the lid here and uh, I might have to take this uh, screen down. There's two screws, one here and one over here. Um, you can't really see it here, but there's a lip where this screen goes up to here. So I can go up above and show you. Um, and then we'll mark everything out and see if I'm gonna have to remove this, but I think I'm gonna remove it anyway, just to make sure I don't hit anything before I drill, but I'm gonna go ahead and check everything out up there first. Here's the parts that comes with these brackets here, some screws and washers. So the brackets will go roughly here. Um, so they're going to be up here a little ways on this land. So this is what I was talking about right here. This screen, when I take it off, this will be gone. But uh, my hole's going to be at, probably up here where the bracket goes. So I'm going to clear it. I'm going to go ahead and, um, and mark this out. I'm going to lay this out, uh, set this hood on top, and see uh, where I'm going to put everything. I put the hood on top and I'm glad this happened because I want to show you something. So I have that vent lid up and it's actually pushing this up in the air. So I'm going to go down there. I'm going to lower that vent lid just a little bit and that will help me um, to center this over that vent lid. But I like to have it in the up position so that I can make sure it's not hitting anything anywhere in that position. So let's... Uh, I'll come right back to you. I'm going to go down there and lower that uh, vent lid just a little bit. So now the vent lid's down. It's about a half inch from here. So I'm going to move this around, try and find the center. I'm looking at my tape marks to see where the center is. Looks like that is. Then I'm going to go side to side, there to there, center it up, pretty much centering it on the tape. So that's about where that will be, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is there's these uh, holes in this hood right here. I'm going to mark them out. I'll show you in a minute why I mark those. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it because the sun isn't, so it's not blazing here and you can't see. So I'm going to mark this out. Just with a pencil and I got another one area right over here and the market over here and we'll see why in a minute and then I'm going to mark the other side same way I'm not sure if you can see this very good but I marked it here and here um, and the reason I'm doing that is because here's one marking here. This bracket here is going to go, and I have a choice to be right here, but then you can see it's hanging over past here, and it's on top of the screw. I want it to lay flat on here. So I can go between these two screws right here, and this actually, this hole actually goes all the way over to here. So what I'm going to do is I set it here. I'm going to mark a hole right here, and then I'm going to drill a hole through there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and um, I might as well do it right now. So I'm looking at it right here. There's my hole. Uh, and I'm fine. I got enough room. I'm just going to make a dot right where I, I'm going to drill it right there. So you can see that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill that. But first I'm going to mark them all out. Then I'm going to pull the screen down. And then I'm going to go ahead and bolt these brackets on. And I'll show you how I do that. So now we have our dots like that. Got to drill the hole in there. Got my screen removed. My drill is too long to fit through here because it's hit it's hitting the uh, solar panel. So I use my other setup here, right here. I'll make sure I put links to all this stuff in the description below this video. So this allows me to use this here. The sun's blocking it. Put it in there. And then I can get in here and drill. So I'm going to go ahead and drill this one. I'll let you watch if you like. You don't have a choice unless you fast forward. It's a uh, 3 16 drill bit. So I did that. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in place here. Here's how you install this bracket. First, you grab one of these carriage bolts, put it under here, and I'll explain why in a minute if you haven't figured that out already. It says to put the screw, put the screw head on the outside here, but we aren't going to be able to because I think we got a little bit of clearance in here for that screen. So I'm going to go ahead and put it through here like that. Um, and then I'm going to put a lock washer. And a nut here. Call it actually calls to put a washer here, but um, I'm seeing the washer would be too big, so I'm not going to do that. And then I'm going to have a, a 11 30 seconds nut driver. I'm holding the other side with my finger now. I'll use my screwdriver. I'm going to tighten it up. I'm going to loosen a little bit. I want it to go down a little bit, the bracket. It worked its way up. I need another hand. There you go. Tighten it up one more. There you go. So now this is sticking up and what it'll do is it'll go through over here. It'll come through that hole there. And then we'll put a, a, a nut and a washer on top of that to hold it down. So I'm going to install all four of these. But first I'm going to go down there and see if my screen uh, clears under here. I just came back up here from going down there and it looks like that screen clears this area real well, like just by a, uh, roughly a half inch, three eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this nut off and put the screw the other way and put the washer and the lock nut on this side and it should all clear. It's my lucky day. So I, I got the washer, lock washer and nut on the back side here. I held the fan up. Everything clears. So I'm happy. It worked out. I just drilled as high as I could. Now you can kind of see why I put this carriage bolt in place here before screwing this up tight because I wouldn't be able to get it underneath here. So that's why you place it there. I'm going to go ahead and put all the other ones on and then I'll be back to you. I put the screen back on. Before we put the hood on, I want to show you the inside, what it looks like. So we did clear the framework for the uh, screen. That worked out real well. Now for the fun part, we're going to set the hood on. So I'm going to set these on right here on top there and go on the other side, see if they line up. Yep. Oh, sorry. Touchy, touchy. There. And I'm going to center it up where I had it before. 
the front and back. And so just so you know, the vent here is facing towards the back. So the front of the trailer is here. So the wind will blow over here um, if you're driving along. So if you have your vent open, the wind will flow over here and you could leave it open to let air flow inside the trailer if you want. So now we put a lock washer here. I'll put one here, a nut, and that carriage bolt holds in place there on the bracket. And it takes us a 7 16 uh, nut driver or socket. Let's turn it like that and tighten it down. And I'm going to put the other ones on and come back to you. So see how easy that install is? Anybody could do it. You just need a couple tools. I'm going to go ahead and pull this instructions off. I might just keep them and put them in my folder with all my other stuff. Inside the trailer here, we need to put the garnish ring on here. And um, I want to show you something on these uh, plants right here is the one I ordered the vents uh, kit that I got has here's a garnish ring and then my roof thickness is two and three quarters of an inch this is made this garnish ring is made for an inch and a quarter to two and a quarter inch thick roof so my two and a three quarters uh, roof won't accept this garnish ring here because it's too short it it needs to be a little longer so the quality of this is pretty good but this is for a thinner roof i i was planning on using this uh one that i took down off the original vent but as you remember it's all sun damage here it's all brittle so i really don't want to use that and I thought, oh, this this could be a problem. I was hoping it would work. I thought about painting it, but then I thought, no, I don't want to do that. So at the time I ordered this, I also ordered a one that I found um, on the, uh, Amazon. This is like six inches, so I'm going to have to cut this so it fits. But the... Uh, this will fit in there just the right size. So the quality is really good. It's nice, thick material. So I'm going to go ahead and use this one. It was only $15 and it's, if it didn't work, I could return it to um, Amazon um, for free returns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this and then it also has a little lip piece here that I'm going to have to cut off or it won't slide in place. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut down. And um, in another video, I show how I cut this. I'll put a link to that video uh, down below so I don't waste your time watching it all over again. But I'll, I'll cut it, and then I'll show you the tools I use to cut it. And then if you want to see more details on how to cut it, then you can go watch that other video. I got it marked out to cut. So I got it marked here. Um, and then this little tab here, this will all be gone here. So I need to notch this down to about here. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all cut out. But I wanted to show you what it looked like marked out, um, ready to cut. Here it is all cut down. So I just use my saw. I, before I used a jigsaw, you can use a hacksaw if you want um, to cut it. Just a hacksaw blade with a handle on it so you can cut it. Um, and then I, I did that, and then I took and filed it, the edges just slightly to break off any burrs that were on there. So let's go ahead and put this on. Um, I have the screw holes line up here. Everything matches up. There's a little trough that this, this sits in, in here. So it goes up and it tucks up in there. So that's what I'm trying to do here is try and get it inside that gap. So it's flush against the ceiling right now. I have this here. 
it's got a shade here and it goes right over all this. It's real simple to install. So I'm going to put it on here like that. So it's up there and I'll show you how it works after I get it up. So you can find in the description below, I'll supply a link to it in the description below this video. So, hope you like this video. Um, just want to show you how the shade works. Make sure you screw into this uh, ceiling real easy. Don't strip it because it's real easy to strip. So that's all there is to that. Here's that shade. So there'll be a link to this in the description below if you want to buy one. And then the crank handle, I'm going to put that on now. So I was going to put the crank handle on that goes on here. It came with a kit, but then it hits. See how it hits the handle? So I just took the knob off of the other one that I just removed. It's flat. And I'll put it on. Push it on place. And this one should clear. There. Let's see if it clears. Hey. Clears. Good. I like it. So, let's see if it works. Yep, it works. Oh, this is done. Well, that's a wrap, everybody. This video is done. Um, it's a nice fall day here in California. And it's kind of nice here because we get to camp year round. We have pretty good weather. So here's all my vents I've done. This one, there, and there. And I have to do this skylight someday in the near future. Um, keep an eye out for this install video of my solar panels. And I have a Victron inverter system in this trailer and four 100 amp hour Battleborne batteries that uh, should be out pretty soon. Uh, I'll probably put this video out before that one goes out because there's a lot of editing to do on it. If not, it might be out already. So take a look through my videos. So thanks for watching, everybody. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, I hope you. Uh, Take a moment to hit that subscribe tab and then also the all button. I appreciate it. Um, I try and come out with videos that apply to all uh, travel trailers and RVs that can be helpful to other people to help people um, encourage them to do repairs on their own rather than paying a shop to do them. Feel free to leave questions, comments, share. Uh, what you've done with your trailer in the comments other people read them and i'm sure they enjoy reading them and learning from them so thanks for watching everybody take care and happy camping